Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today we are going to be talking about traffic management. Uh, specifically, uh, I'll be providing some tips about traffic management in the vanilla game. Uh, so I play on console. I do play with a mouse and keyboard connected so it might look a little different. Um, and I have um, all of the DLCs uh, installed except for airports because that one does not interest me. Um, but we are um, here in one of my older cities that I've since uh, revisited uh, to check out some of the new DLCs and just kind of mess around. But I'm going to use this city to show some examples of um, you know the way that I've learned to manage traffic in the vanilla game um, on console. Uh, so I'll provide some practical tips for, uh, you know, ways to build your cities and manage them um, based on my experience playing the game and my experience uh, as an urban planner and kind of the way those things fit together. So I'm going to start by talking about zoning. Um, and you might be thinking zoning is not, it's not about traffic, but really it is. Um, when you think about creating cities, it's important to think broadly about creating a mix of zoning across your city. Um, you don't want, you know, all of your commercial relegated to just one area. Like, I don't want to put all of my commercial, for example, way over here across the highway, and then all of my residential only on this side. Uh, and vice versa. You want to make sure that you broadly have a mix of zoning types across your city. So, you know, I've got some areas where I, I kind of concentrate some commercial, uh, which is also realistic uh, to real world cities. Um, but then I have, uh, you know, areas with lots of residential and some commercial nodes uh, scattered amongst them. So I'm going to come back to talking about zoning towards the end, um, but just wanted to sort of start off with that concept that if you, um, you know, sort of segregate your zoning to very far apart distances across the city, that means sims have to travel long distances to reach their destinations, and that creates a lot of traffic. Uh, so yeah, broadly, just think about a, a mix of zoning uh, across your city. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to cover is uh, something called roadway hierarchy. Uh, you maybe heard other uh, YouTube or, or content creators uh, mention this before. Um, and you know, planners generally, urban planners generally talk about roadway hierarchy as well. Sometimes we talk about uh, functional classification of roads, which is a little bit more technical. Um, but for this purpose, I think roadway hierarchy makes a lot of sense and is very useful to uh, implement in, in your cities you build. Uh, so roadway hierarchy is a system uh, of organizing road types by you know some type of ranking uh, or you know a, a way of thinking of them based on their function. Uh, so one way to think about it is by looking at um, the speed and capacity of, of roads um, and the amount of traffic that they can carry. So at the top of the classification are highways. So I don't have a highway built over here, but we'll just go ahead and, and add one for demonstration purposes. Um, so highways carry a lot of people all at once, uh, a lot of cars. They travel very long distances, uh, the speeds are very high, and there are very few intersections uh, along a highway. So at the top of the roadway hierarchy are, are freeways or highways. The next type of road uh, in the hierarchy are arterials. So I've built out a pretty basic uh, street layout here that shows all of the road types in, in the roadway hierarchy. Once you get off of a highway, you're probably filtered onto an arterial. Arterials are able to handle uh, 
high amounts of traffic as well. Uh, so when you think about the roads that you would use to create arterials, they'll probably fall under um, the large roads and you know they'll often have six lanes. In smaller cities that you're building you can get away with medium roads uh, with four lanes. Um, just kind of depends on uh, you know the scale of your city. But for this purpose I've built uh, this arterial and you'll notice that there are not very many intersections. You don't want to have a lot of junctions because that slows roads down or that slows the traffic down a lot. So I've got minimal amount of, of intersections here. In the areas where I don't have intersections I've added some you know, pedestrian paths uh, so that folks can, can access those roads as well. And, you know, I would, I would build that out even, even more. Uh, but for this demonstration, yeah, I just wanted to show that arterials a high amount of cars at relatively high speeds and have few intersections. So the next level down from arterials are collectors um, and you know, the purpose of collectors is kind of as it sounds. Uh, you know they collect traffic from from other roads um, and they tend to have more of a moderate speed than arterials. Um, it's less about um, moving traffic at high speeds and, and more about access. So um, in this example um, I'm using uh, this road here with the bus lanes uh, as an, uh, an example of a collector. Um, you can see that collectors have more intersections than um, an arterial would. Uh, so intersections that are slightly closer together, um, which is something you would not want to see on an arterial. A couple other examples here. I've got this road that's functioning as uh, a collector. Um, I put bike lanes on it because given that this road doesn't have as many lanes, uh, cars wouldn't be moving quite as quickly, so it's safer for bikes to, to go uh, and, and travel on that road. And then another example uh, is this this road, which is, falls in the um, small road type. Uh, it's a four-lane uh, small road, um, and it's also it also can function as um, a collector. And I I use these roads very regularly in my cities um, because you know they have they have four lanes but they aren't as wide uh, which I find to be pretty realistic uh, in terms of cities and that's something that you see all across the country as well um, you know particularly in, in older cities um, where you know roads were built out before we were super uh, hyped up about the automobile so the roads are tend to be a bit narrower but we are able to fit, you know, four lanes on, on roads like that. So those are collectors. Um, you're able to hop on a collector and travel a pretty long distance, but if you're um, wanting to get to your house, you know, you can still um, jump off of that collector pretty easily and, and get into one of the local roads. And yeah, then finally we have local roads. Um, I'm showing uh, local roads here with these gravel roads just so you're able to you know, distinguish them more easily and visually, um, but essentially um, local roads tend to have uh, lower speeds, they're more narrow, and they have more intersections to provide um, increased access to destinations. Uh, so if, uh, if highways are about speed and moving traffic quickly, uh, at the opposite end of the roadway hierarchy are local roads, which are about access. So there are more junctions uh, or more intersections um, with other roads, which means that access uh, to, to more destinations um, are increased. Um, so you can think of these as like two-lane residential roads. Uh, so you know most um, most sims are probably not going to be driving on 
this segment of, of Smithson Drive unless um, they live on this segment of Smithson Drive Street. It's not a road that a lot of cars are going to need to be on, so there's fewer traffic, or there's fewer amount of traffic and um, lower speeds, and it's more narrow. Um, so yeah, those are at the bottom of uh, the roadway hierarchy. So to recap, um, we have uh, freeways, which are uh, at the top of the hierarchy. Um, traffic is then funneled onto arterials, which is this one through the middle. From arterials, traffic tends to be um, uh, distributed onto collector roads, uh, like this road, or this road, or this one several others here and then from collectors uh, you have uh, smaller uh, local roads so I'm gonna come back and revisit this uh, street layout uh, later but first we're gonna talk next about um, roundabouts uh, so I guess I'll hit play here and and talk about um, the way to use roundabouts most effectively. So again, uh, this is one of my older cities, um, which I've since revisited. Uh, not the, the most beautiful or most efficient um, highway interchange here, um, but it gets the job done. So uh, it, it's pretty common for folks to um, use roundabouts after highways to more quickly manage traffic um, and get them distributed into a variety of directions uh, once once cars get off the highway. Uh, so something to keep in mind in terms of roundabouts is um, the number of lanes and um, you know this roundabout's functioning pretty well. Traffic isn't um, backed up uh, but what's um, pretty important is that uh, after a highway, I tend to load two lanes onto a roundabout that has three lanes in it. You never want like three lanes from a highway merging onto a roundabout that has just one or two lanes. Uh, it tends to not work well. Um, I think for this purpose, you for this uh, roundabout, you could probably get away with just two lanes. Um, but yeah, you never want there to be um, uh, yeah fewer lanes uh, in your roundabout than you have onto um, the connecting roads. And overall, like. Um, you know, a main purpose of setting up a roundabout here is so that you don't have a massive amount of traffic sitting at one intersection with traffic lights. That um, really backs up traffic and is never, yeah, never very efficient in uh, city skylines. It's pretty typical to see that within real cities. Um, but yeah, in, in, in terms of, of city skylines, roundabouts tend to be um, pretty efficient for keeping traffic moving after um, exiting um, the highway. So speaking of highways, um, uh, next I'm gonna talk about something called lane mathematics. Um, and, you know, I think lane mathematics was uh, coined by a YouTuber, uh, Biffa, I believe, um, and I was introduced to it after I uh, watched uh, some some uh, YouTube videos. But if you haven't heard of it yet, pay attention. Um, it's uh, pretty much essential for vanilla players to learn this concept. Um, if you're building cities that are, um, you know, relying on highways uh, in any form, or especially if your cities are getting larger than, you know, like 30,000 sims, um, that's when you can really start to see some problems. So, I don't like this, this interchange, uh, but for the purpose of demonstrating lame mathematics, it's going to work really well. Um, so 
One one of the issues with uh, this this game in terms of traffic is the the uh, traffic AI, and um, you know there's a lot of a lot of things that don't work that great with the traffic AI. But one of them is that uh, cars just don't switch lanes or use the right lanes um, compared to the way that traffic would behave um, in real life. So you have to. Um, Know, kind of come up with a workaround to fix that. So lane mathematics works uh, like this. Uh, you count the number of lanes that you have in one segment and make sure that it adds up to the number of lanes you have in the next segment. So for example, right here we have three lanes and we've got this off ramp, which means that we have to do some math. So We've got two lanes that are going straight, one, two, and then this off ramp makes three, so two plus one is three, and that math uh, adds up well here so that you, um, yeah, so that the lane mathematics will allow for this far right lane to be a turn only lane, and then that keeps all the traffic moving more smoothly uh, through this uh, section of the highway. Um, same thing happens when you bring the, the cars back on. So we've got um, three lanes here, two that are continuing straight, one, two, and then three from this on-ramp. So one, two, three, need to transition into three lanes, one, two, three. Uh, and if we keep going, we're going to go from three to three again, three lanes straight, and then one, two, three. And then when you bring the on-ramp back on, you've got three, and those go into one, two, three. So that just allows for all of these cars to merge easily into this lane, and all of these cars will go straight into those other two lanes. And, you know, this is not a realistic interchange uh, in terms of the way that interchange work interchanges work in cities. Um, you'd have a lot longer uh, exit lanes, and um, this would definitely be a more gentle curve to, to get back on. Um, but overall, um, while you wouldn't see this kind of lane mathematics in a real city, it is uh, an absolute necessity for managing highway traffic in city skylines. Um, so, now that we've covered you know, a lot of basics, we're going to put several concepts together in another example. So um, what I'm going to introduce now uh, is kind of combines uh, some of those concepts uh, into, into one example. I'm going to have to pause the clock so that I don't start um, generating a bunch of buildings here that don't have any services in this <laughs> in this street layout um, that I set up. So I've just um, zoned, zoned some areas here to, to illustrate um, how roadway hierarchy fits together with zoning. Um, so in terms of what types of zoning should go on which types of roads, this is really important for traffic management. Um, you would not want to put uh, residential uses along your most busy arterial road. And in part that's because arterial roads tend to be pretty loud. Um, traffic is moving more fast, you know, more fast. Traffic is moving uh, quicker. <laughs> traffic is moving quicker uh, and that makes traffic loud. Um, and, you know, in addition, higher speeds are not necessarily very safe um, for, 
for a residential street either. So um, you want to put your commercial uses and office uses along your arterial roads. Um, in the real world, that's how it works as well most of the time. Um, businesses and offices want to have um, easy access to a lot of customers or a lot of employees uh, and putting them on these busy roads uh, just makes sense in terms of, of good business practice uh, to uh, yeah for exposure and and for reaching customers so yeah keep that in mind um, that your busiest roads um, should have your commercial and office uses and one thing to note is that office use typically generates um, not very much traffic at all um, which is you know not necessarily realistic um, but if you do have really busy intersections or busier segments of your roads uh, it might be a good idea to put office there um, and then uh, in terms of you know collectors uh, it makes sense to, to put commercial or offices along collectors. You see I've got a couple of nodes here where where there are um, commercial nodes uh, along the collectors, um, uh, which is the right use uh, for, for a collector road. And the other, the other reason I have a couple of nodes here is just for ease of access for these residents. So someone that, you know, lives right here, for example, only has... Um, you know, basically two blocks to walk in any direction to reach um, a commercial destination uh, and that helps to um, reduce traffic as well if people are able to walk or bike to their destinations there will be less cars on your road and um, it works like that in real life as well um, and in fact uh, you know suburbs tend to have a high amount of traffic because suburbs tend to um, segregate residential from all other um, zoning or land uses. And my final tip about zoning um, is about industrial zoning. So it really helps to keep your industry, <laughs> your industry, <laughs> your industrial uses um, close to your highways. Um, uh, so that they don't have to travel uh, through your residential neighborhoods uh, to get to to get to their destinations. So um, this particular roundabout is uh, let's say play here is pretty busy because um, you know the industry for the most part uh, has to use it in order to get on and off the highway or uh, any other um, place in the city. Um, the other thing in terms of industry is to make sure that your industry has really good access to your um, cargo train uh, terminals or train train hubs um, and I tend to set those up with one-way um, roads uh, and one-way industry roads so that you don't have trucks coming from both directions trying to come in and out and this way you get trucks going in on one side out on the other side and it tends to run pretty smoothly and then finally uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, biking and walking in your cities uh, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you're building lots of you know bike paths and, and other uh, pedestrian networks um, and uh, in terms of a good thing to do uh, is to turn on your encouraged biking policy like immediately uh, I do that right away and yeah that just uh, helps to to get sims on their bikes uh, instead of into their cars it definitely helps you to to manage your traffic um, so in terms of uh, pedestrian and bike lanes uh, yeah, you just want to make sure that you have a pretty good network of ways for your sims to get um, uh, yeah to each part of your city so I've got um, bike lanes through this main part of my city that run here both uh, we'll say east to west and uh, north south 
Um, so yeah, if you think about the f you know the, f the fact that each one of those bikes could be in a car here, the traffic would be pretty backed up already. So you uh, yeah, it's yeah important to build in um, some bike networks uh, through your city. And another uh, way to sort of supplement that further is to connect your bike network bike networks into your park system. So if you have um, parks that have pathways through them, um, connecting them to your bike network will uh, allow for, for Sims to use your parks as uh, a mode of, of transportation uh, to bike uh, longer distances, particularly if you have like longer uh, sort of linear parks or um, parks along uh, a riverfront or waterfront, for example. So yeah, in the U.S. we uh, unfortunately tend to um, prioritize uh, private vehicles over uh, pretty much any other form of transportation. Uh, but that doesn't have to be the case in City Skylines. We can, we can build our uh, bikeable, walkable cities uh, even if they're not that realistic. So let's just take a second here to appreciate all of this um, bike traffic. Another thing to think about that I think a lot of players ignore, because it can it can be a little bit time consuming, is um, going into your traffic routes and managing your junctions. Um, so there are some ways to uh, sort of automate this uh, in vanilla, um, and that that can be done by by um, selecting your roads, your arterials and your collectors and making them priority roads. So I'm just going through and doing that right now. Come over here. And uh, what that does is it will automatically set up um, the stop signs to uh, prioritize the roads that you choose as priority roads. So I made Blackwell Street a priority, which means that it's putting stop signs on the cross streets. So um, these cars will be able to move freely, freely without stopping, and uh, the other uh, roads will, will, will stop um, for them. Unfortunately though, um, anytime you put in a uh, road I think that's medium or large it will automatically put in stoplights and a lot of times that is just not what you want so um, I think a, a stoplight where a uh, collector meets an arterial probably makes sense uh, most of the time unless you you know unless it's a really small city that doesn't have any traffic but you definitely don't need all these lights along this this collector so I would definitely want this local road to stop for um, the other the uh, the traffic on the collector um, this is also a um, a collector meeting a collector so you know you could use your discretion about whether or not you want this to be a stoplight but pretty likely um, you would want to prioritize the co this collector as it's um, probably more of a uh, you know sort of in between a collector and arterial and then yeah you can go around and um, probably remove some of the stop signs at, at other roads um, and adjust as needed like yeah this this smaller uh, intersection of local roads doesn't need any stop signs at all and I'd say that's the case for probably all of the areas where the local roads meet. Um, so yeah, you can go in and 
um, manage those things to keep traffic moving more more smoothly um, and uh, yeah when in doubt I guess I would say try it out without stop signs um, in the real world I would never give that advice <laughs> uh, but for for um, this game you can certainly get away with um, uh, fewer stop signs um, is better and yeah as I wrap up here uh, I'll just mention that setting up public transportation is extremely important for your cities if you want to reduce car traffic uh, in the real world um, you know public transportation past bus lines is not uh, as common as uh, you'd think, uh, you know, definitely not as common as what we build in, in city skylines. So definitely start out with some bus routes and um, uh, well, I'm not going to go into much detail here, uh, save it for, for a future video. Um, I'd say that Metro is probably the form of public transportation that functions, you know, the best sims for some reason will choose metro over just about any other form of transportation you know a lot of the time and metro works really well for um, moving longer distances across your city so you know I'd probably set up um, a line that would go into this part of the city like the heart of the city here as well as maybe a, a loop around the city um, and, you know and maybe one or two other lines uh, and uh, yeah, that would be really, really popular with Sims and would definitely decrease uh, your traffic overall. But yeah, we'll save that for, for a future video and uh, yeah, make sure to check back for that uh, soon.